one. In the wild library, where books talk and robots dance, a clumsy bot turned history book into funny comic, making accent battle and laughter making, and then a new student came. She was confused when she go first gone to the library. There were many books, but she liked history, so she come to the history part, take a book and open, but it's not about history, it's about comic. She's pretty confused, but she thinks that maybe someone put it in the wrong place. So she took another book, but it's still the same. And at night, she find out that the robot just keep turning the book into comic. So the next day, she walk in to the robot room, tiptoe to find the station and find a button to call to turn off the, the robot. When she find it, when she almost turn off the robot, what she don't know is there's a robot behind her. Then the robot take her and turn her into a book. And she got turned into a book. So every time. So like the story is kind of like every time a person or a new student find out that the robot turn turn the history book into comic and try to turn them off, they got turned to book. And what the new what the new girl don't know is that the robot is made by her father, the person who don't really like history, just like reading comic and. One day he got back from his house because his grade, his history grade. So he hate comic. He turned up. So he have a really crazy idea, making a robot to turn, wait, just to turn a history book to comic. So kids will enjoy it, and there's no more history, no more sleeping in history class and stuff. But. But what he don't know is that he don't care to care that some students like history, but he don't care because he don't like it. So he turned those robots, and every night they just keep turning the history book to comic, and that's it. So we wait for the second participant. Thank you, Dave. In a minute or two, he'll, he'll be coming. Second participant, Tom Win Tung Shang from BAS. In three, two, one, go. In the wild library, where books talk and robots dance, a, clum a clumsy bot turned history books into funny comics making ancient spouse into a laughing matter. And then, a, a fifth grader named Marcus was studying in the white, in the light berry, the lower wind, for his test, and suddenly, his history book started turning to comics. Confused, Marcus looked at, Marcus looked at the other books, but the only thing he saw was comic books. Suddenly, Marcus didn't know what was happening until one of the books spoke. Did you really think this was a normal library? The book asked. Marcus took a step back. Marcus took a step back as he did not expect that the books could speak. Still surprised, he mumbled. Yes. Well, you're in for a treat, my friend. The book said. After the book said that, Marcus woke up in the library, re realizing he dozed off. But then, as he was standing up to put the book back, the book spoke again. So this is participant number three, Nguyen Viet Tang from BAS. Hello everyone, my name is Nguyen Viet Tang and I'm an eighth grader from BAS Garden Hill. Today I will be presenting a story called A Library. 
in the wild library where books talk and robots dance. A clumsy robot turned history books into funny comics, making Asian battles a laughing matter. And then a librarian came. The books became silent, and the robot froze as nobody wants to be caught by her. Suddenly, she made a move as the librarian jumps to a shelf to carefully study it. Her eyes dart around the shelf until she found a book. She grabbed it and leaves the library. When the robot became active again, she, the door suddenly banged wild open and the library, librarian came back. She chased, she chased on the robot. Uh, and catches one eventually. The robot was, was uh, immediately obliterated and the other robot hide in fear. But then the librarian leaves again. She, the, the books started talking again and the, and the robot uh, walk around the library. Uh, that's the end of the story. So we wait for the next one. Good job. This is participant number four, Tran Phuong Kiet from BAS. Hello everyone. My name is Chang Phuong Kiet. I'm a RFA writer from uh, BAS Gallery. Today, I will tell you about a story. What the name is? The library door was burst open. Leading to a mid with greenish fog to come by us down from the ground. The library was dead silent. No one knew what was happening. Maybe this one, maybe the mist was of a leaking machine. Nobody knew. The robots looked at each other. Some were confused, some were scared. In the other hand, the book suddenly fell out of the ground, looking completely silent. As soon as, soon as the mist began to fade away, just then, just then, an angry sound could be heard echoing to the library. For humanity, destroy the machine. We have our, you can just go to the stage please, fifth participant, Pham Min Zuk from VAS. I would like to present my story at the wild library where books talks and and robot dances. A clumsy robot turned history books into funny comic, make ancient battles lock, a laughing matters. It is a magical place where anything happen. I gently picked up a mysterious book from the shelf. I read the title out loud, When Robots Become Humans. Suddenly, 
of the lights turned off and the library now was filled with darkness. Then the robot eyes turned from blue to red. I felt scared. Something was wrong. Out of nowhere, the robot stopped pulling laser guns and decided to open fire. I, I quickly hide in the corner of the shell. Then I decided to run as fast and as far as I can get. I also called 911 for help. Then my accidentally my leg get shot by the lasers and I can't walk anymore. Luckily the the cops have arrived and they quickly um, and, they, and they quickly killed the robots. And after a few days, I get to the hospitals, hospital, and I after a few days, I get to the hospital, and I have quickly recovered from the with my leg. Thank you for this. So we have uh, contestant number six. Number six, Win Hao Mai. Hao Mai, sorry, from LSDS. Start with three, two, one. Eventually, everyone started reading these books and mistaking it as real historical events, which actually is not. It doesn't make sense at all, but since they were still little kids, they believed that these books make sense and believed it. In history class, the teacher was educating them on the topic of <clears throat> Yin the Ark, and she asked, So, here's a question for you guys. Do you know where she is from? And a kid raised his hand confidently, claiming that she is from the Candy Kingdom. What a name is that? Like, we all know that doesn't make sense, do we? But the robot just laughed it off, thinking it was a silly mistake, and the school's gonna repair all the books. She, he dreamed at night, and he entered a battlefield. Deadly smoke, burning fire, and he stumbled upon a lifeless robot. The robot's eyes were blank. It was clear that the robot has died. He was so terrified. That was the first time he ever saw a dead body. And he was petrified. He couldn't do anything. He didn't even know why he was there. He didn't know it was a dream. Then he saw quick footsteps. A woman ran to him saying, My son, have you seen my son? He was taken by the enemy. I heard the news and I ran here, but I couldn't see him. Have you seen him? The robot was confused. Who was he? Who was she talking about? No, ma'am, I haven't seen him. I'm sorry. A trembling man came upon. I saw a prophecy of you. You made our suffering into a joke. I can't believe it. We fought for our freedom. Blood loss. Tears were shed, people died. I know that you can see that. And yet, you made it into a joke? What was I fighting for? The robot could see that he was shivering with sadness, his eyes full of disappointment and despair. He replied, I'm sorry, sir. I, it, it was an accident. I, I swear I'll, I'll, I'll change the books. Um, history will be back to what it was meant to be. Then, he woke up. It was just a dream. He was so glad it was a dream. But the first thing he do, he will change the book back to normal. And he was determined to do that because he know that changing history, and it just, it means that he just wipes away the effort 
of people in the past who protected him. And if it weren't for them, then he wouldn't be here. If, so he went to the library and he searched for the rest of the books. And he went through some of them and he was so fascinated by history. Like, he felt like it was so boring, but after meeting that man, then it was so interesting. And he was so proud of what um, the people before him had done. He was so emotional. So he tried to repair his mistake. And the books were back to normal and the students were sad at first. But he educated them saying that this is a way to show that you're grateful for what um, they have done in the past. And yeah, um, the students, um, <clears throat> the students were not bored of history anymore and they were proud. The end of the story. history books into funny comics, making ancient battles a laughing matter. And then the present changed. The ruler, oh, now we have a ruler, and it's a ruthless tyrant who rules over the land and 
who rules over the land and um, yeah, a robot who changed history into funny comics is now the ruler's pet. And even though she was, oh, the robot is a she. Uh, she was um, safe and happy in the palace going around, but people were seen as the near bottom of the heart. So it just means that um, people weren't seen as important, like not as important. They're just under the ruler's commands and um, rules, laws. Um, so come back to the bot. Uh, the bot wasn't uh, seeing that anyone was happy enough because everyone was just just working, going to work and being under the ruler's laws. So even though she was happy and safe, she decided that no one was happy. So she wants to go against her boss, the ruler. Um, she swings open the door and tries to fight and go against. But after the restless battle, she didn't win because she's, you know, just a pet, just a robot. But the people heard of her effort and they admire it. They're happy that she tried risking herself for that courageousness. So at the end, the robot became more, the robot became less selfish because he used to, she used to be like, oh, this is my position, I'm gonna keep it. I'm not risking anything for anyone. But after this, even though she lost, she still got the admiration of the people. Thank you. So you can watch it from here. It's just over like last one. So we have our ninth participant, Nguyen Ha An from LSDS. Please start in. try to find some so some kind of solution to it. How could have this been, he said. As he tries to get answers, the librarian sees him and asks him what happened. I don't know what happened, but apparently I did something and now all the books have changed. See, the librarian said, why would you do that? And, it's like, and the robot would robot reply, Oh, well, I played around a little bit. The librarian said, Come on, we had to do this before Tuesday because some of the best ta some of the best critics are going to visit the library and put a re review on it. They're like a popular celebrity. This library is going to fail. It doesn't meet their expectation. And the robot was anxious. It had a thought in its mind. How, how can I fix this? He thought. And then the librarian gave him a solution. Well, maybe you could try visiting the wizard. The robot replied. Him? The librarian nodded, and the robot knew exactly what it needed to do. It climbed up the mountains to visit the librarian's uncle, aka her uncle. So, what brings you here, my child? Well, I accidentally ruined all the books in the library. Next Tuesday, we have a critic coming up. If we don't do this before Thursday, they're going to give us a bad review, he said. And, as, and then the wizard said, 
Oh, oh, oh. That's an easy job for me. All I need is a blonde young woman. If you can bring that for me, I can complete the ritual and bring all of the books to normal, he said. And so the robot immediately went on a mission, find a young woman that was blind or was blind. And then when he was walking out the streets one day, he saw a person. He could only saw the, see the back, but she had blonde hair and she looked pretty young. And then he approached her. Do we, do we know each other or something? She said. Oh well, hi, my name is Robert. I am here on a mission to help my library. He said, oh, cool. Are you that robot that asks for job applications or something? He said, oh, yeah. And then she followed her into the castle that he was in. Oh, well, isn't it? mysterious and then she followed the wizard's order and and completed a ritual now all the books are This is number 10, Win Bao Chung from BAS. In the wide library where books talk and robots dance, a clumsy bot turned history book into a funny cosmic comics, making ancient battles a laughing matter. And then, a dragon appeared in front of the clumsy bot. The bot is so scared that he can't move anymore. A book saw the situation, so it said to the others. But the dragon had noticed, so it began chasing them. They ran toward a hole and jumped into it. The dragon tried to follow them, but the hole was too small. For it to get, uh, to get in, so it decided to wait outside. But in the hall, there is a secret tunnel, which let them get to a safe place after a few days of waiting. There was no more food in the safe place, so the book decided that they should go outside and find some food. But to the surprise, the, the dragon has disappeared. So they take some food and go back to the safe place, not knowing that the dragon is digging a hole to the safe place. After, after some time, they think that the dragon has uh, go disappeared. But they so they go outside. But they didn't know that the dragon had got into the safe place and just waiting for them to come back and eat them. Then they go outside. After some time, the dragon haven't seen them come back to the safe place. So the thing that they have died, so it we have our contestant number 12, I mean 11, 11, Win Bu Jian An. can start in 3, 2, 1. Good. 
Good morning, judges and everybody. Today, I will be telling you a story about Harry, a bot who was making fun of the history books. In the wild library, where books talk and robots dance, a clumsy bot named Harry turned history book into funny comics, making ancient battles a laughing matter. And then, the history book shouted at him, Hey, please respect the history book and the one who have fight and sacrifice their life in the battles. The boss, sh the boss shouted, who even cares? It's just the past. The book turned his back and said uncannily, you will regret it for making fun of them. The bot, the bot then get froze into one place. It seemed like he got hypnotized into the books surrounded by him. Suddenly, Harry disappeared and then got teleported to a heating Scary battle containing many dead bodies. Thousands of peoples are rushing towards the enemy, stomping and squeezing him rapidly. Harry screamed out loud, Hey, please stop! But then he laughed, got distracted, ha ha. Everybody then angrily turned to him for making fun of them. They are fighting for their own countries. Then they switched to attack Harry. He covered his head, preventing them from throwing spears and bomb at him. But as soon as they, he opened his eyes, he saw nothing, except for the battleground containing many horrific images. Harry then shouted, That is scary! What are these things? They are so gross! The sky then shaped like a, an erupting volcano, and a voice said, Did you see it? That's how people have suffered in the past. Did you learn your mistake? Harry then stand for a while and then said, Um... Not at all, because they didn't fight at me. They didn't throw things, and I feel nothing. Then the sky wrote out loud. Now take this punishment. Harry got, then got teleported to a jail. Not an ordinary one, but a one with stinky and a scary look. It looked like a nightmare. Everybody was stepping towards him. Harry looked like a scaredy cat, stepping back. People are chanting out loud. Give me food, bring back our peaceful, we need them. Harry then was, Harry was confused. He's slowly stepping back and then, what are you guys doing to me? Stop, stop scratching at me. But that was just the opening of the history. The lesson for Harry for making fun or teasing the history was huge and a lot more terrific. But let's see what Harry will pass in the future and will, we, will he regret his decision for making fun and teasing the history. Thank you for listening. Number 12, Win Mok Chuan from EAS. Today, I will tell you a story entitled The Rigging Competition. Once upon a time, there was a boy who was funny. He just liked to play, blocking and stopping everyone in all day. He was smart, but he was extremely lazy to study, especially he really hated reading a book. Then one day, he hears some friend talk about a library which was opened a few days ago. They said, in the wild library was book talk and robot dance, a clumsy but turned history book into a funny comic, make ancient battles, a laughing matter and is create a competition, competition about reading who could read the whole library the one and get a and got a ticket price. The boy found some interesting about it, so he decided to visit the library. Library. He went to the forest where the library stayed. 
the library covered by trees, and it looked like a cave. A cave. The boy came in. He took one book, found a seat, and he started to read. The boy was so ex surprised because the story was so awesome. He, from that day, he really liked to read a book. He come to the library every day and enjoy it. Also, to come to join the competition. So day passed. The, then he won. He won a competition. And the owner of the competition says the secret prize is the secret. Is the passion for reading, the knowledge from reading, and the time that you spend out to reading was meaningful. Thank you. So we have our next participant. This is, well, this, I think the stage please. Derby from VFIS. In the wild library where books talked and robots danced, a clumsy robot turned funny comics making ancient battles a laughing matter. You might wonder now, who is this bot? Well, it's a bot named Robbie. See, Marty was always a curious robot, which is kind of strange because robots basically know everything. Marty also did not like the fact that some ancient battles were super boring, like one side would fight the other side, one side would lose, but then they'd come back in the end, and then they win. So he decided to do a special project. He went to his teacher, his history teacher to be more exact, uh, Mr. Book, and asked, hey, can I do a special project for history? He said, sure. So Marty started working and decided to do a comic. But this comic was about the Battle of Marathon. So he decided to change some facts up in the story. Example, what happens if they were like too fat or maybe disabled in the story. So he starts writing, writing and writing and he makes a comic. He decides the comic is like super good, decides to publish it. And this book was a massive, I mean massive hit. This book in the world that is in the story changed the whole perception of the battle because no one in this world had done stuff like this. So Marty became like famous and people like paparazzi were following around. See for most celebrities this would be kind of annoying but for Marty this would be pretty fine because he was always kind of a lonely bot. And he gets married, and has a baby, and has a second baby, and a third baby, and many more babies. Yeah, he was doing a lot. And one day on his yacht, his mom called him and said, hey Marty, I'm kind of sick, can you come over? So he goes flies all the way to where his grandma, was where his mom is, and she says she's on his deathbed. She has stage four oil cancer. Yeah, stage four oil cancer is very dangerous. Side effects of this are like, sometimes they go off charge early and way more dangerous stuff that could lead to robot seizure. Don't ask what that is. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So his mom died, sadly, of this disease. Ronnie was sad, but knew that there was more ahead, and started to write another book, but this time about the Battle of Sparta. 
and made even more wild changes. Like, what happened if they were all gay? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, oh. Uh, yeah. Then those changes suddenly arise, a magical creature. Yeah, a magical creature. A magical creature that was super big and cursed Ronnie, saying that if he's made any more stupid books that alter the reception of like the world's history, uh, he will be cursed with way more deadly stuff. And like and would probably suffer a way more first fate. But he just make another comic and it worked. But oh Right, we have our number four. Fourteen. Fourteen human quack from the IS. So there was this wild library where books talk and roar stairs. And a clumsy bot accidentally turned history books into funny comics. And ancient battles into a laughing matter. And romance novels, romance novels into horror pieces. The library was in mayhem, more than it used to be. Well, this library in particular, it had no definite origin. It was suddenly found in the woods, enclosed in a canopy of trees, engulfed in a veil of infinite darkness, and no light was able to seep through. The books just suddenly appeared there miraculously in fine shape, texture, and color. It was a sea of literature, but also a threshold of silence and mystery, for nobody had ever entered the library. At one particular time, there was a plane hovering in the sky for one second, and then in the other second, it crashed, the plane's nose buried in this dirt. A young girl crawled from the mess, eyes bulging with undeniable fear. Her heart was tolling in her ears and her legs felt rigid. She suddenly stumbled upon the library, as if the library was sitting there waiting for her the entire time. She stood on the, she entered the library bravely and stood on the icy cold floor with imperfect cracks, cracks of imperfection. She stood there flabbergasted at the scene her eyes were admiring. Books were jabbering incomprehensively and they were talking like human beings. Maybe they were. Anyhow, she thought it was amazing how the books were arguing about a subject that she couldn't understand. It was unintelligible, but she wanted to find out more. So she walked around the library, and she clumsily smashed her skull into a shelf. And then, the second she woke up, she saw herself somewhere that's not the library, but a place filled with a feeling of dread. She looked around, and despite all the desperation and fear she was feeling, the desperation that was clawing at her chest, 
There was a sun, a bulging ball of flame, seeping its light through the lush blades of grass. It was a beautiful scenery, down to a place she wanted to escape because she couldn't get up. No matter how hard she tried, she just couldn't get up. It was like a force was pinning her down. And a second ago, wasn't she in the library? And now she was in, in this void, in this real, where she felt like she was a puppet and there was a mass puppet master controlling each movement that she made. She was really puzzled. She tried to sit up, but of course, the force that was 10 times greater than gravity kept pinning her down. She turned to her left, where she saw a scene um, of Victorian era characters hip-hopping on the floor, their heads lopping up and down, and majestic knights fighting one another using banana peels. Oh, so she was one, in one of the stories in the library. She was trapped in there in a void, but she couldn't escape in all of the mayhem. So we have our contestant number 15. So stage please. Yes, you have this one. Contestant number 15, Win Tran Tian from LSTS. Our story starts in a big school of America called Herkelton High. Now, let me tell you, Herkelton High was not like any other school. This school was filled with robot assistants, filled with incredible intelligence to help the students and even sometimes the teachers in their teachings. Another thing, however, is these bots are so smart that they have made a secret society. Now, oh shoot. Uh, in the wild library, where the robots danced and the books talked, there was a clumsy little robot named Phoebe. Phoebe was an incredibly art artistic little fellow, and she loved drawing. But Phoebe had a very bad habit of doodling in the library books. She loved drawing on specifically history books, especially the Roman and Greek mythology ones. Oh, Medusa, you've got such silly, scary hair. Let's replace all those snakes with gummy bears. And let's have you, mister, shoot out confetti and cotton candy instead of strike lightning. Oh, everyone's got to be so happy now with all this magic and rainbows in the world. And while Phoebe was drawing, she heard a noise. One book yelled, everyone, back to your original positions. And all the books and the robots scrambled back into their places. And soon enough, the library was all clean again. Turns out the noise was from a student. Phoebe was so distracted in her drawing that she couldn't make it into hiding in time. Guys, wait for me! But then while Phoebe was scrambling away, she accidentally knocked all the books on the table, from the table to the ground, and she was only able to hide in a small corner. A student came in, picked up the books, flipped from page to page. He was perplexed. What? what? Why are all these drawings? How am I supposed to present my history? He examined two hours of the, the drawings were all like this. And not to mention all the notes were on the ground. He got on his knees and started picking everything up. No, 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 why is it in shambles? I only left for five minutes to get coffee. When Phoebe was her, when Phoebe was in the corner, heard that, she felt devastated. Her purpose, her only life purpose, was to assist humans. Yet she screwed up so badly. Phoebe knew there was only one thing she could do. She got up slowly from her wheels, peeked around the corner, 
walk slowly behind the student. Um, excuse me. Uh, I uh, um um. I twirl with your mom, baby, it was bad, that's so we. And then the boy turned around. He was surprisingly tall. And then Phoebe saw his student card, scanned it up to down. And then Phoebe was surprised. Not only was she was in the presence of the student with the worst GPA in the most prestigious school of America, but he was also preparing for his test. Phoebe, Phoebe was shocked. And then he said, I just, I, I don't know, Phoebe. I, I need to get this all together. Then he took all his notes and Phoebe said, I can help. And then these two worked together and made a beautiful costume of Pursuus, the warrior who was known for slaying the vicious Medusa. They were so happy together and Phoebe was surprised that he had such a good nature. Then they went home and he and Phoebe were best friends. The end. Stage please, we have number 16, Chao Hong Hai from LSDS. Let's start with the greenest flag. Uh, in this wild land where, ro where robust days and uh, books talked, uh, a clumsy robot accidentally turned a book into a very funny comic. <clears throat> and the robot got out of control and started to uh, make more books uh, into comics. <clears throat> but then the police got aware of the situation. Uh, they started to take action and they chased the robot. Uh, the robot ran over obstacles and the laser beam stabbed the officer uh, shot the two was to stun the robot. Uh, temporarily, the robot escaped into an alleyway. Uh, it decided to take a, a nap there and wait for tomorrow to go out. And tomorrow came, when it woke up, uh, it saw a poster and it said that uh, the robot was wanted for $200,000 for some reason. I don't know why I do. <coughs> uh, so the robot uh, tries to undo uh, the things that they have done, but there's this guy who caught the robot is he claims to be and I'm a I'm, I'm an ancient guy from the year nineteen eleven and I'm gonna murder your whole family. Ha 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 So the guy proceeds to take the robot power and use reverse psychology and turn it into evil. So with the newfound power, the, ro the robot, uh, the, the ancient guy was able to summon and possess uh, other people and robots. And uh, he was creating chaos over there and over here and over here. Chaos was all over the world. So there was a war between the robots and the guy. The guy was very powerful. He summoned a lot of uh, monsters which were from the depth of the hell. And but the robots tried to defend it. They have laser beams and uh, yeah. Um in the fight 
uh, the man also infected multiple uh, of the robots. Uh, and then there was this very anticlimactic uh, death. Since it's anticlimactic, I'm not going to say. Um, <coughs> but thankfully, with the robot, uh, <coughs> the fun uh, of the other robots was defeated. But there was one robot, the robot at the beginning. He had the power of friendship weapon as he blasted the villain off and he uh, disappeared in the sun. Yeah, and world peace was achieved. Okay. Yeah, thank you everyone for listening. I am so nervous for you now. Good, great job. In the land of Winsteria, there was a library. It was no ordinary library, it was a wild library. Books would talk with one another, and robots would dance to music. There was a librarian. Her name was Willow, and she would, all, she would do all sorts of spells. There was, one, there was one spell in particular that caught a, a book's attention. It was, an un, it was an unknown spell. Willow would not talk about it under any circumstance. But being, being a mischievous book, uh, the book, book somehow got its hands on the on the potion. How would it taste? I mean, surely it wasn't that bad. So the book decided to drink the magic gold potion. Sip after sip, if the book began to levitate. Up and up it went. Uh, up and up it went until it was uh, two meters above the ground. Help me, it cried. It cried. A few minutes later, a few of the book's, book's friends began to gather around. Gather around. Looking up, they could see their poor friend floating away. She was helpless. The, the book was almost out of sight until Willow appeared. What's all this commotion about? As Willow screamed, as Willow screamed, she looked up. She looked up at the, at the. She looked up and saw on the book, the book floating away. It was almost, it was almost away from the eye's view. She could, t she could see tear ears rolling down the book's, the book's face, the book's face is as it began as it dropped down on from the sky. There was nothing they could do about it. It was pointless. They saw their poor, they saw their poor friend and, and floating away. Fast forward to, fast forward to today. Okay. Every Friday, every Friday, a mysterious liquid comes down to water their plants. Who knows, it could be the book's tears. Willow still didn't dispel it, oh she did, it, it. decided it would be a good a chance, it would be a good opportunity to keep, to keep the potion and it's locked away from anybody's view. So, a few a few days later a new book came it was it was it looked the same
same as the previous old book, but it was but it was like different. It talked it talked in the same manner or as as the book that floated away, a and and it. And it walked the same. The, the book this time. Good job. We have number 18. Uh, Dan Fong Yen from BAS. Something that's the flag between. Today I'm going to tell you about a story. In a wide library where books talk and robot dance, clumsy robot turn his storybook into funny comics and making Asian battles a laughing matter. And then it starts to giggling. Suddenly, a book says, Guys! I can see a massive footprint over there. Stop saying so, things. Another book replied. And they are returning back to the mood. Suddenly, an enormous footprint appeared on the outside of the court. Books and robots are pretending. They're screaming and shouting as the master comes closer. The furious mother with his red, bloody eyes staring at them through the window. Just then, it jumped down a tall tree and threw it to the window, which made it broke down into pieces. The monster get it and start chasing them. Their heart beating like it's about to fall out of the jets. They run and run faster. Fortunately, they made a fairy, a stunning and calm fairy. Fairy, help us! A fairy monster is chasing us. A robot said, No worry, I'll help you. A fairy replied. Then she pulled out a magical string, shiny golden hair, and pointed at the monster. Just then, the angry monster started to shrink. It keeps shrinking and shrinking until it reached a size of a mouse. So scared and frightened, it quickly running away. Oh my god, thank you so much, fairy. You saved our life. A book said, the charming fairy didn't say anything. She just juggled and juggled and juggled. Suddenly, her voice became weird, and a swarm of fireflies surrounding her, her eyes between getting more red and red, a bloody eyes. She's a fairy, or is she? The end. Thank you. Lai Chung Tin from BAS. Start when the flag is weak. Hello, everybody. My name is Lai Chung Tin from the BAS Garden Hills campus. So, let me introduce you to a story. In a wild library where books talked and robots danced, a, bot, a clumsy bot turned history books and into a funny comic, turning one ancient battle into a laughing matter. As the crowd of laughter continues, the books started to glow, like, uh, and claws formed inside the book, trying to escape the book. The ancient beast had the appearance described just like how the ancient battle had uh, confronted it. Then, the ancient monster, it broke through the roof of the library and ravaged through the city, breaking down building by building. 
The monster had a fearsome appearance. Its eyes showed crimson and the body of a dragon. While its wings, while its wings layered behind its back, spreading whenever it wanted to travel to the next uh, place it wanted to destroy. Its mouth drooled with molten lava, which dripped and seeped into the ground. The librarians and the bots, they took no hesitation to run away straight into another location, hoping to survive this encounter. Whilst the clumsy robot, it hesitated. It waited until it decided to grab the book and it fleed, it fleed into the forest, hoping to hide its presence from the great monster. But then, suddenly, as the monster swooped right into the forest as if the book had had alerted its instincts that it was being taken away. Immediately, once the monster found its target, it burned the surrounding area and it forced a confrontation of the monster and the clumsy robot. And that would be the end of my story. So that ends our storytelling contest. Thank you, uh, thanks a lot for all the participants and for all our uh, distinguished uh, judges as well. If we can get uh, just a group photo for the judges and the presenters at the stage. So to present one of our judges, we have a longtime actress, nominee for the best student short film script in a national competition, former director and producer of Silent Players Community Cheddar, Ms. Alenka Thank you. Now, next for our next event.